Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I'm going to be talking about training to heart rate zones versus your power zones and how you can match them and how you work with them. Uh, before I get into that, I want to give you a little bit of background on how this topic came about. Uh, I want to thank uh, the first guy, there's uh, Shigi, S-H-I-G-E. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Shigi just bought a set of our new arm warmers. And I just wanted to thank him for supporting the channel. Those arm warmers, I pretty much consider to be limited edition. So I'm glad you got yourself a copy because uh, they're rolling out pretty quickly. We still got quantities left on the store for those of you who may want to get a copy. But uh, I myself went ahead and just got two sets. I mean... I don't use them a whole lot, but I wanted to just keep them so for posterity because they're a unique design and, and they are they really blended really well with pretty much any kit. And so the design worked. I also want to thank uh, Nylon. Uh, Nylon's in, I think, San Jose. Nylon signed up on Patreon to support the channel. And uh, I worked with him this week over the phone. Uh, he's trying to get a, a frame size correctly for him. He's taking the, the correct route. So there will be no guessing and so forth. And nylon has been cycling for about a year and a half. And he, he told me on the phone, I'm new to cycling. I told him, stop saying that because the fact that you're here, I told him you're already ahead of the game. You're educating yourself. The people that ride for 10 years don't know half the stuff nylon knows. Nylon knows how to size the frame correctly and all that kind of stuff. So he's learning technical stuff that the average rider who just rides doesn't even know. Uh, I've come across riders who've ridden for more than 10 years don't even know the length of their crank arm that they're riding. Yeah. Uh, the other person I want to thank is Abel. Abel is also a supporter of the channel. He signed up on Patreon. And he also went ahead and signed up for remote coaching. Uh, the remote coaching thing that I offer work best for people who are patient. If you're not patient, I'm not going to bother investing my time in you because it takes patience for you to improve. You have to be patient enough that when I say Right at zone two, you do zone two. If you start creeping into other zones, you hurt the program. So I try to get to know people before I really invest the time in building a plan for them. And uh, Abel is one of those that looks like he's the right temperament for this kind of support. So he signed up and we're going to be building him a plan. And uh, a lot of the people that are remote, I work with them on Skype because it's a lot less expensive if you're outside of the U.S., and so that helps us kind of get going. So I wanted to mention these super legends because these are the people that keep the channel going. As this part of the channel grows, I can divest my time from other things and spend more time on the channel. So these are the people that make it happen. And I just would be remiss not to mention that. In addition, uh, Abel is the one that introduced a topic that I felt compelled to cover. He had a question. He says, matching between heart rate zones and power meter zones and the perceived rate of exertion. So he says it's something he's struggling with. Yeah, I know why you're struggling, Abel. Uh, you don't want to. You can't harmonize them, per se. And I think that's what you've been trying to do. Uh, Abel's been working with Wahoo Fitness. And Wahoo Fitness is not going to know you better than you know yourself. So unless they're, they're, they're allowing you to enter your own zones, whatever algorithm that they coded in their software to create training zones is very likely that it's either too high or too low for you. And so when I was reading through the information that Abel sent me, there was a note, a paragraph where he said, you mentioned in your videos that your endurance pace is zone two. He said, I don't even seem to have a zone two. And that clued me to the fact that his zones were off. Coupled with the fact that he seems to be trying to train to too many different things. Don't try to train to heart rate as well as power at the same time or as well as RPE. Pick one. And I'm not saying pick one. And then stick with it forever. If you want to go on one ride and say, you know, today I'm not taking the power meter or I'm going to turn it off and I'm just going to go by feel. That's okay. On a day where you say, I'm just going to take it easy and you want to go by feel. That's okay. 
But don't try to train to all three of them at the same time. You will drive yourself nuts. So what I'm doing with Abel is we're going to start, first of all, identifying his threshold heart rate. Because another thing he talked about that really, that's the reason I wanted to cover this today. This nonsense about, I call it nonsense because that's what it is. What they tell you, 220 minus your age. Your, you know, your maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. It's always off. I mean, think about it. How, how can that work for everybody? Everybody has a different heart muscle that beats to a different rhythm. Uh, I was born with a heart. Mo- I have a bigger heart than, the, you know, somebody else my size. So my heart rate has always been a lot slower. So other people have maybe what I, I would compare to like maybe a two cycle engine or something. Their heart rate beat like little kids. Their heart rate beat faster. So what are you going to do with a kid you're training? You're going to say 220 minus their age? I mean, come on. Plus, why do you want to train to maximum heart rate? Maximum means that's it. You can't go any higher. So why would you train to that? How would you accommodate the changes in your fitness? That's what's flawed about that formula. So that's old wives tale. That's, that's just... It's no longer relevant. You want to train to what we call threshold heart rate. Threshold heart rate is where your breathing changes. I made a video about that. I will put the link here. Uh, when you're riding and you get to the point where, man, <sighs> where you need to employ deep breathing techniques, you want to note that heart rate where your legs feel rubbery. You know, they're like, you ready to quit. That's your, that's your threshold. That's the red line. You're creeping now into the red zone. Okay. Nothing, nothing's bad if you go above the red line, but you need to know where that red line is. That's what I use to create zones for people like coach, because that red line is going to change. If you take time off from working out, that red line comes down. I mean, it has to be enough time. It will come down. If you stay consistent to the course, that red line goes up. And you train to that and then periodically, I usually use macro cycles every six weeks. We look at how you, how your perceived effort in those zones are. Is it too easy, whatever? And then we adjust accordingly because you will do these tests for your threshold. And so you have to decide, get your threshold heart rate first, get your zones for heart rate. Then do, there's a different test for power. For getting your functional threshold power. You do that test. You get your numbers. Your zones derived for power. So then you decide. I'm going to either train to heart rate. Power or RPE. Don't try to do all of them together. Now over time. After you've decided. Okay I'm, let's say you, you say I'm going to train to heart rate. And you got your zones nailed down. Where you go to zone one. It's just easy. You, you know, you don't even feel like you're working out. That's your active recovery. Then zone two is steady. Yeah, I can do this all day. That's, that's what you need to be. That's your zone two. Zone three, yeah, it's harder than zone two, but you feel like, yeah, I'm about to, it, it's kind of like a, a medium intensity. You know, I can hold this for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and a half, thereabouts. And then zone four, I can hold this for 30 to 45 minutes. That's slightly below time trial pace. Okay, Zoom 5 are for short, intense efforts. Okay, now, I'm throwing that out there because I want people to backtrack. Pick one. Decide, I want to train to heart rate. Ride and train with that for a while to where you get comfortable with it. If you happen to have a power meter and heart rate monitor at the same time, focus on training to heart rate and then see the corresponding powers that you're producing. Then decide, okay, you know what? I'm going to train to power. When you, when you decide to train with power, once you derive your zone, what you want is to analyze the data. Still wear your heart rate belt, still have your heart rate zones, but then try to identify that in this power zone, this is the heart rate I started, these are the heart rates I was doing. This is, so you compare the zones, meaning that power zone one, what are my heart rates? What zone am I in by heart rate? You're not doing that on the bike, you do that off the bike. You analyze the data. Over time, it will become second nature. But until you've derived an understanding of each metric, don't try to compare them. You will drive yourself nuts. So what what Abel is having challenges with right now is that 
his his heart rate zones are off. I'm not even sure what his power zones reflect because it really all derived by that Wahoo Fitness stuff. You know, so I'm going to get him to do the specific tests. Once you do the test, because you have to have confidence in your zones, that makes you stay the course for the workouts. So you can train with power or you can train with heart rate. Don't try to do both. You can compare them after the fact to, to learn that, okay, when I'm training at, say, 150 watts to 250 watts, these, this is usually what my body's doing. And then over time, you can see, oh, it's my body saying that my heart rate is lower in the same power zone. That's an indication that you're getting fitter. You're generating more power in those zones. That's what you use that for. But you want to decide what you want to train to. Now, how do you decide? If you have both, you want to train to power because power is instant. Power does not reflect environmental conditions. Power does not reflect whether you slept late or you're tired or whatever. So it's more of an independent value. It's more consistent. If I'm doing 300 watts and you're doing 300 watts, nobody cares what the heart rates are. 300 watts is 300 watts. You know, so yeah, I would err on the side. So anybody that has a power meter, I want them to train the power. If you just have a heart rate monitor, we train to the heart rate. They're all effective when used right. So for Abel, what we're going to do first is we're going to establish his heart rate zones. Then we're going to establish his power zones and we're going to have him train to power. And then he can cross reference what his heart rates are doing at those different power levels. So I want so we're starting with heart rate because I want him to understand his body first before the mechanical representation that power will give him from his output. Okay. The reason I wanted to cover that is he put a lot of good stuff in here where he's got these zones like active recovery, he got his power in watts and different things. But how he derived his power zones, I'm not going to use that. We're going to do a test because you have to test periodically. They're not a whole lot of fun, but it's better to test so that it's based on you and not some formula or data sample. Um, now, I'll read something that he says. Here. He says, as soon as I start pedaling, less than two minutes, I'm already at 125 to 140. His easy zone, according to his Wahoo Fitness Zone, says zero to 133 was easy. So what he's saying is I might as well sit on the couch for recovery because according to these numbers, as soon as I start pedaling, my heart rate is 125 to 140. So I don't know what gear he was in or whatever, but it doesn't really matter how long you've been pedaling. What matters is did you start the ride up a climb? Did you start the ride into a wind? You know, all of that plays a factor or have you been off for a while? You know? So we, we're going to establish the zone so that he can understand that to use the right gearing to keep him in the zones. Because right now I don't have confidence in the zones that Wahoo Fitness is, is, uh, laid out for him. Then he said, if I turn, if I push a bit more just to feel intensity on the pedals, what he's saying is at 125 to 140, he doesn't feel anything. That's like active recovery. Maybe it could be his zone. I don't know that at this point. If I push a bit more, I feel the, so feel the intensity. By activating the cadence, I'm already at 145 to 165. I can feel like I'm working very lightly, but this is a rhythm I can keep. He said the whole day. Then he wrote me and qualified and said his butt would start hurting and all of that. When well, that comes to fit now, you should never get uncomfortable because you ride the bike more. You should actually get more comfortable if your fit is right, the longer you ride. So that, that's another thing we're going to have to address because you should be able to ride for an appreciable amount of time, especially for his goals. He's going to be doing some long rides. He needs to be able to ride for more than six hours in comfort. Then he says, if I turn the intensity screw a bit more, my heart rate is already 170 to 185. And in this zone, he says, I know I'm working out. Well, that tells me that's close to his zone four around sweet spot. The way you can talk in short conversations, but you're working. It might be slightly above tempo for him. He said, I don't suffer necessarily. I can still talk and I have 70% control of my breathing. Another subject for a question to come. He said, I can hold this intensity for 90 to 120 minutes. So that tells me it's zone three for him. And he said, when I race, this is where my heart rate goes from the start to the end. So his racing 
zone is 170 to 185. That's what he's saying here. Okay, uh, I'm not going to get into where he's he's trying to relate them to what he called first gear, third gear, like a car or whatever, because that's that's too subjective. Uh, now he, but what I am going to read here, he said, referring to your videos, when you mention Zone 2 as a good spinning and fat burning capillary break, burning building zone, it's like I do not have a Zone 2. Zone 2 is like putting my feet in a bathtub. With my physiology, I might as well build capillaries by watching TV. So that confirmed that his zones were off. Everyone has a zone two. He just hasn't identified his. And uh, the good thing about that is it dispels this myth that everybody has that you have to be uncomfortable or in pain to improve. Not for aerobic sports. Um, when you build your capillaries, that's where you also build your strength. Zone two Slide up the tempo. That's where you, you do your, your climbing and your muscular endurance and the heavy gears. You don't need to be at, at your aerobic capacity. You use your aerobic capacity after you're already strong by increasing your cadence to tap into the aerobic limits. So when you're racing, you're not using strength all the time. That's why you have to increase your cadence because the speed is changing. You save that strength. When you're going steady and long marathon ride, whether you're riding six hours or you're doing a 500 mile race or race across America, you use strength. You stay in the zones two to three. You might creep into four, but the main thing is zone two. You're building muscular strength. If you never train and build muscular strength, you can be the fastest guy in a one hour ride, but you start riding with people who are going longer, you will suffer because you don't have those capabilities. That's why road racers cover all zones. And so when I train people, whether you're going to tour or whatever, I have them tap into all these zones because you need to be able to go faster if a dog starts chasing you. And after you get away from the dog, you need to be able to drop it down to zone two and maintain the speed that you've attained. Okay, so you want to tap into all those zones, whether it's your intent or not. You don't necessarily need to do maximum sprints if you're not going to race and you don't want to be the first across the line. But you still need to be able to push into the different zones so you are a more dynamic all around cyclist. So I'm going to wrap up here by saying that do not just go and buy a heart rate monitor or buy a power meter and start looking at numbers. You need to identify your zones before you begin using them. Otherwise, they won't mean anything. That's why Abel is confused. That's why he says, I might as well sit watching TV to, to work on building capillaries because his zones are off. Everybody's physiology is different. And he even mentioned that in there with my physiology, I might as well sit down. So uh, Wahoo Fitness or whoever else, they got a lot of training plans online. They got all these formulas online. I even made a video where I laid out the formulas. That doesn't mean anything if you haven't done the tests truthfully to identify where your threshold is if you're doing heart rate or where your functional threshold power is if you're doing power meter training. OK, uh, the power meter training usually says go for 20 minutes. I don't do that. I calculate. I do it for about like a five minute and then I calculate use a, using an algorithm to get you close. Uh, it's not easy for somebody on their own to push hard for 20 minutes to give me the average that I need for the functional threshold power. So there is a way that I do the test to where you can use five minutes and I extrapolate it and take out a percentage to account for the, the slight difference, but it gets you there. You don't need to be exactly on the finite what you need to be in the right range. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up there um, by saying that, don't use 220 minus your age. That's an old myth. It's been out forever. It, I haven't come across anyone that it works for. It's always for me when I did the math back in the day, 220 minus my age put me 20 beats below where my actual maximum heart rate was. Meaning that the actual heart rate where when I was winning a race, where I knew I could not go any harder that, I, that, the, that the computer said this was your maximum heart rate that I didn't even see because you're not really looking. But you don't want to find your maximum heart rate. It's not a whole lot of fun. Who wants to do that? 
And plus, why would you train to your maximum? That means you can't go any harder. It can't go higher. That's your maximum. So no, you train to threshold. I want to thank all of you that have, are supporting the channel on Patreon. It means a lot to the channel. Take advantage of the perks that you have. Send your question to customer services at veloharmony.com because the reason these guys, Abe and a couple of other people, Paul locally here, the reason that they've signed up for coaching is because you can train all you want. If you don't have anybody to answer your questions, that's what drives you nuts. So what they're really paying for is access to guidance. I could write a plan for the whole year. I don't do that. I give them plans for six weeks blocks so that we can revise and find out, is this hard enough? Is this not? If you don't have that, you can go online and get any kind of training plan and follow it blindly. It's hit or miss, but you won't understand what you're doing. But by having a coach, it's like an advisor that gets you to know your body. When you understand yourself, you can train more effectively with less time and, and have the confidence when you get on your bike each time that you have prepared well. That makes a big difference. The mental confidence knowing that, yes, I'm ready, is what a lot of athletes don't have because they just train haphazardly. Oh, I'm going to go do this group ride and do that group ride. It's not structured. The people I work with, I include group rides in there if it's available to them because you want the group to push them. But it's not just haphazard. We use the group to get to certain levels. So with that, I'm going to stop here and just say, keep the K's in. And for those of you who have questions, sign up on Patreon. Send it to customer services at veloharmony.com. And we will answer your questions as we go forward because that's the only way we can manage the growth of this channel. Thank you so much and stay safe out there.